Good morning. My name is Mark Acosta. I'm one of the assistant metro editors here at the Press Enterprise and PE.com. We're here today to talk about uh, something that happened at the Riverside City Council meeting the other night. I'm with uh, our staff writer, Alicia Robinson, who covers the city of Riverside for us. Alicia, can you hear me? Yep. All right. So we're here to talk about uh, what happened at the city council meeting on uh, Tuesday night. I understand we had uh, the arrest of a Riverside resident at the council meeting. Actually, this is the second time this has happened in recent months. We had another one in October. Uh, so why don't you start by telling us uh, you were there at the council meeting. Uh, what happened? What did you see? What was the scene like? Well, um, I attend a lot of council meetings, and uh, sometimes they're pretty quiet. You don't have a lot of people in the audience. Uh, other times, if there's a particularly hot topic that people are feeling really uh, passionate about, a lot of people will come down to the council chambers and will take their turn to speak uh, during public comments or commenting on some of the items on the agenda. Um, the last couple of weeks, we've had a lot of residents from the university neighborhood uh, around UC Riverside. Um, they've been expressing concerns about students uh, renting single-family homes and throwing loud parties, behaving disrespectfully, etc. So uh, a lot of those residents were there on Tuesday, and um, while they were speaking, uh, or when they would finish speaking, uh, other people that, who agreed with their comments were clapping. That's not uncommon. Um, a lot of times there'll be uh, presentations or someone will get an award and everyone will applaud for them and nothing is, is thought of it. It's um, acceptable. But uh, the mayor, Rusty Bailey, who is still somewhat new, he just was elected last fall, and he has taken, uh, he's made a point the last few meetings um, or I guess probably he's tried since he took office to run the meetings in a way that there's not a lot of um, noise or things that he would consider disruption, like applauding and things like that when it's um, you know just people coming up to express their views. So he's been telling people when they uh, clap, you know, please don't do that. It can be uh, perceived as intimidating by someone who might have a different viewpoint and they might not want to come up and speak. And Generally, it dies down after he says this, uh, and people pretty much seem to have been listening to him. But this past week, uh, one of the residents in particular, a woman named Letitia Pepper, uh, she's been kind of a longtime activist in the Riverside uh, community, and she's also an attorney. Um, when she was told, you know, when the mayor told people not to clap, she answered back from the audience and said, basically, you can't do that, you know, essentially asserting it's a First Amendment right to express herself. So she continued applauding when there were things she agreed with. Um, and the mayor continued to try to sort of get a handle on the situation. And when she persistently continued to clap uh, after people would speak, the mayor uh, read through a couple of uh, pre-prepared warnings that say, you know, you're disrupting the meeting, you need to stop or you'll be removed. And when she still continued to clap, he directed police officers to remove her from the meeting. And so what happened then, and, and how was it different than the one in October? Well, what happened next was the officers approached uh, Letitia. They kind of had a little conversation with her, and she felt that she was fully within her rights to be clapping, that she hadn't done anything wrong, and that there was no reason to remove her from the meeting. So she said, I'm not leaving unless you arrest me. So the officers did physically take her out of the building. They handcuffed her and took her to the police station where she was given a citation and released. Um, so this was a little different from what happened last fall. Um, in October, uh, a resident named Karen Wright, who also frequently comes to council meetings and comments on a lot of the issues that come up there, um, she had been speaking and she went a little over the three minutes that are allotted for public comment and the mayor at that time, which was Ron Loveridge, warned her, okay, Karen, you know, your time is up, you need to conclude your comments. And he, he told her a couple times, and she said, well, wait, you know, I'm just finishing this sentence, etc." So finally she, uh, the officers kind of approached her to make sure she was going to leave the lectern and let the next person have their turn. And she sort of started to step away, and then she turned back and said something else to the council. And then the officer tried to get her to go outside, or to sit down, and she she wouldn't didn't want to do it. So they ended up having a little struggle, and then she ended up getting removed from the meeting as well. Um, she was also given a citation, 
um, for uh, dis disturbing a public meeting, which is a misdemeanor offense. However, she never actually um, had a court, full court hearing, and the district attorney's office decided in April that they were not going to file charges against her. So that case is effectively over, and you know she apparently was was found not to have done anything wrong because no charges were brought. Um, well. Again, that case was a little different because Karen, I think, genuinely believes that that she was trying to uh, obey uh, what she was told to do, and um, Letitia quite clearly heard that she, what she was repeatedly instructed to do and, and just felt that it was an invalid uh, instruction and chose to disobey it. So the situations were a little different. They did both end in an arrest, and um, it'll be interesting to see whether the DA's office decides to, to charge uh, Ms. Pepper since they clearly didn't seem to think that uh, Karen's rights case was worth actually uh, taking to court. What, what has been the reaction to this uh, second arrest at the council meeting? Uh, it's, it's been split kind of into two camps, right? Well, you know, I, it's, it's, it's a little bit of a nuanced issue. I think, you know, the mayor and the folks at City Hall, uh, I think, are, you know, are, feel that, it, that it's defensible and that it was the appropriate thing to do because, you know, somebody was disrupting the meeting and disturbing people, you know, in their view, and that when they were told what the rules were, they refused to comply. Um, however, you know, uh, Ms. Pepper and some of the other um, people who come to the council a lot and have a lot of criticisms of the city, you know, they're kind of wondering what, you know, is, is this a police state where we, you can't even clap at a meeting or you're just going to get, you know, <laughs> taken out by the cops? So I think um, some of the, the uh, city observers who are maybe more on the critical side feel like the city's policies are intended to squelch their criticisms or intended to basically silence people whose whose viewpoints they don't want to have to listen to. But there, I've talked to some other people in the community who kind of feel like they're a little bit split on this. They kind of feel like some of the people who come to the council meetings repeatedly are trying to be disruptive, but on the other hand, you know, they're not threatening anybody and they do have a First Amendment right to express themselves and that, you know what, when you uh, run for city council or mayor, you kind of ought to know that you're signing up for you know, people maybe criticizing you or saying things that you're not going to like. So the, the opinions are really all over the place on this one. Right. Okay, well, thank you for taking the time out to join us. Um, for those of you watching, thanks for watching. Um, Alicia is going to continue to stay on this issue and on all other issues uh, going on in Riverside and at Riverside City Hall. So keep, keep reading the Press Enterprise and uh, looking to PE.com for the latest uh, on uh, news in Riverside and elsewhere. Thanks for joining us.